Welcome to another lecture in the Engineering Design Modeling and Graphics series. This lecture is entitled Necessary Orthographic Views. In this lecture, I will focus on the two accepted methods for orthographic projection. Discuss how to determine what orthographic views are needed or appropriate for a given engineering drawing and provide a review of how to correctly position the needed orthographic views on the drawing sheet. Let's begin. In previous lectures, we have introduced the concept of orthographic views. Where all viewing vectors or lines of sight are parallel, in this simple example, parallel viewing vectors would produce what is shown in B and would be called the front orthographic view. We have also learned from previous lectures that orthographic views can be projected using either first or third angle projection techniques. Here we have a simple blue doorstop. The red arrow indicates the direction of sight for the front view. Using first angle projection, front surfaces are projected to the back wall of the three-walled, partially opened glass cube. Looking down from the top, the visible surfaces are projected to the bottom wall of this glass cube. And looking from the right side, the surfaces that are visible are projected to the left wall. Now let's contrast first angle projection with what we use in the US, namely third angle projection. Here again, we have a blue and brown simple doorstop sitting inside a partially open glass box. Again, the red arrow indicates our viewing direction for the front view. Notice how the visible surfaces are brought forward, projected onto the front wall of the glass cube. The surfaces that are seen when viewed from the top are projected up to the top wall of the glass cube and the surfaces that are visible from the right side are projected to the right wall of the glass cube. When these two glass cubes are laid flat on a drawing sheet, one can clearly see the position of the top and right side views with respect to their front view. Study the graphic symbols for these two types of projections. Make sure you understand how they denote first and third angle projection. One thing we have not yet discussed is how to choose the front orthographic view and how to orient the object within the glass box. Also missing from our discussion thus far has been the topic of how many orthographic views are needed or necessary. Here is another doorstop modeled in the Siemens NX CAD system. How I modeled this object and its current orientation is the subject of other lectures. What is important to note is my choice of its front orthographic view on this drawing sheet. As a general rule, choosing the model orientation that shows the most detail projected orthographically to the front view is correct. Once the front view is established, the CAD system can easily project all other orthographic views as seen here. These projected views are the result of having my drawing preferences set to third angle projection. Are all of these orthographic views necessary? 
do they add details not seen in other views? Clearly, in this simple example, the bottom, left, and back views are not needed. Do we need the right side orthographic view? If no dimensions or notes are associated with or added to this or any other view, then it would not be needed and should be left off the drawing. Personally, I would keep the right side view so that I could dimension the arc that goes from the top horizontal surface to the front vertical surface of this part. This arc cannot be dimensioned in the front or top views, so the right side view is necessary. Here is another doorstop. How many orthographic views are needed on the drawing sheet? What view would you use for the front view and what other views would you create? Here are the three views I would recommend. All visible lines are true length and the visible surface is, the, is true size and shape. This is not true of the top and right side view of the sloped surface. It's foreshortened and would not be dimensioned in either the top or the right side view. One of the reasons the top view is necessary is to size and locate the two holes. The right side view is needed so the slot can be sized and located. The lengths of the holes and the slot would be dimensioned in the front view. Here is another doorstop model. How many views are needed on the drawing sheet? What views would you create? Would you create three? What value is added by the right side view? I would suggest that this part be represented only by its front and top orthographic views. Here is a model of a simple bushing. How many views are needed on its engineering drawing? What would they be? Are three views needed? Of course not. The top view looks exactly like the front view. Therefore, only the front and right side view of this cylindrical bushing are necessary. Now I know some would argue that the axis of the bushing could be oriented vertically on the drawing sheet. While true, it is not common practice. If you had it oriented vertically, you would create a front and top view because the right side view would be exactly the same as the front view. Again, it is important to note that most cylindrical part models have their main axis oriented horizontally to the engineering drawing sheet they are placed on. This is a model of a stamped sheet metal shape. How many views are needed on its engineering drawing? Too many engineering students are being taught by their academic professors that more is better. This is not true. Yes, it would take only a fraction of a second to have the computer generate these other views, but they are truly unnecessary when all that is needed is a, sing a simple note calling out the thickness of the plate. In Gisiki's technical drawing book, 
He shows this single view as the only view necessary on the drawing. This is because in the dimension annotations, symbols are used to indicate squareness and roundness or cylindricity and or diameters. A note is also used to indicate that the raw stock is cold rolled steel with a cross section that is 65 millimeters square. Let's take a few minutes and review how, min how views are positioned on an engineering drawing sheet. Assuming third angle projection and that the red vector indicates our viewing direction for the front view, then our front, right, and top orthographic views should be positioned as illustrated here. However, over the course of teaching for 30 plus years, I have seen many CAD drawings come in for grading with the views misaligned like this. If you ask the CAD system to project views from the front view, you will not get misaligned views. This problem only arises when you place, not project, multiple drawing views. This shows a different common problem, wrong placement or altogether wrong views. The right side view is placed where it should be if we were using first angle projection, but we're not. The bottom view is also placed in the wrong location for third angle projection. I should mention that the bottom view, like the left and back view, are normally thought to be wrong or poorly chosen views. The only exception would be if the bottom, left, or back views show more detail than the top or right view. If so, use them, but make sure to place them in their correct projection positions. When needed, use more than just the front, right, and top views. We will discuss this in more detail when we introduce other types of projected views. Finally, make sure to space your necessary orthographic views correctly on the drawing sheet with sufficient space for dimensions, notes, and do not crowd the title block or border areas. This concludes our discussion on what constitutes necessary orthographic views on drawing sheets. By now you should be able to understand the two accepted orthographic projection methods. You should be able to discuss how to choose the front orthographic view and which other views are necessary given a 3D model or part. And finally, you should be able to explain the correct placement and positioning of these orthographic views on an engineering drawing sheet.